Hello, Taurus. Welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to January of 2022. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So please keep in mind, you guys, that this is a general reading. Yes, please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, we are going to be splitting this up as I've been doing with the readings this month. We're going to be splitting this up. So the first half of this reading, we're going to be talking to Taurus Rising, and that is from the practice of sidereal astrology, not tropical or mainstream. And then the second half of this video, we are going to be pulling general energies for the energetic collective of Taurus. And that part of the reading is non-denominational, yes? So whether it is that you resonate more with sidereal astrology, tropical astrology, Vedic astrology, whatever, the second half of the reading is going to incorporate everybody, yes? Now, like I said, the first half of the reading is going to be speaking to Taurus rising, and that is from the sidereal uh, astrology point of view, yeah? So, um, yeah, that's what we're doing here. Yay. Uh, welcome, you guys. If you are new here, hi, my name is Eric. It is so wonderful to meet you. Um, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Smash that like button for me. Leave me a comment in the comments section down below. Share this with your friends and your family, whoever you think may be interested. Yes. Also, I am available for private readings. If you would like to get a private reading with me, you can find my email address in the description box below, along with a few of the readings that I offer. Also, if you would like to get some extra content from me throughout the month, check us out over on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can be found in the description box below as well. All right, guys, we're going to get started here. But right bef before I get started, I just want to mention there is some work that's going on in the backyard. They're building some things. And so you might be able to hear some of the power tools that are being used. I apologize if that's distracting. However, hopefully the music that we have playing here in the background is a good amount of a distraction. Yeah. All righty, guys, let's get into this. Taurus. Hi, Taurus. Taurus rising, yes. So, Taurus, um, I have quite a bit written down here for you in terms of my notes here, and I am going to show you the chart in just a second. But Taurus, your title for this month or the energy feels for you this month, it feels like the, the title that I wrote down is, I'd really rather we didn't, but, and begrudgingly moving forward, and this morning when I woke up, um, I was laying in bed. This was right when I woke up. I was laying in bed. I was thinking about my day, meditating a bit, collecting my energies consciously, thinking, okay, today's Friday. It's a Venus day. We're talking to Taurus and Libra today. And, and I got this image of Taurus and Libra not really having a good time with what's happening right now. Your ruling planet is retrograde at the moment, but the image that I got in my head was of Taurus hiding under a rock, trying to avoid what's the, the changes that are coming and or trying just to ignore them. And Libra is standing out there in the open while everything is crashing down and everything is crumbling down, just kind of standing there saying, it's all good. <clears throat> everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay, but not necessarily sure they believe it themselves. So pretty interesting image. And then it, when I, when I really started to get into the charts for both of you, I really started to understand why. So Taurus, let's get into this. I want to show you the chart and then we're going to talk about what I have written down for you here. So what you see in front of you is the chart for Taurus rising for January of 2022. Taurus, your focus this month um, with this big old concentration conglomerate of energies we have here, your focus is between the seventh and the ninth houses. All right. Um, the main focus for you this month is the eighth house, which is the house of secrets and the unknown. It's ruled by Scorpio, which is your exact opposite in the Zodiac. Um, now, the eighth house is also the house of death and rebirth. Um, and this is where I'm getting the energies of you begrudgingly kind of getting up out of your seat or getting up out of your position and saying... 
gosh, I really wish we didn't, I really rather that we wouldn't or that we didn't do this, but oh well, here we go. And I, I'm kind of, I'm literally getting an image, Taurus, of somebody that has been sitting in this seat for a while, maybe even a comfort zone, okay? And kind of just literally begrudgingly getting up out of that, out of that position and, or out of that space, okay? Now, what I also have written down here for you in terms of the eighth house energies for you, Taurus, is transformation is happening and most likely on an interpersonal level. But then I also wrote down, but fixed sign, LOL. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, Taurus, you're a fixed sign. And so you, Leo, Aquarius, even Scorpio, you know, we all as fixed signs, we have trouble with change and the change that is happening for you Taurus definitely feels like it's change in in terms of your interpersonal relationships how you relate to people there's there's a feeling here of some sort of sense of traditionalism um, a traditional mindset, a conservative mindset, something traditional, something that has been upheld for a long time, maybe even something that you have upheld for a long time in terms of yourself, but really it feels more specifically in terms of the people around you, um, something that you have upheld for a long time that maybe created a sense of comfort and security and stability for people, but now that doesn't seem to resonate any longer. And the reason why you it feels like you're begrudgingly getting up out of this seat or this position that you've been sitting in, in terms of whatever it is you've been preserving or upholding for people, it feels like you're begrudgingly getting out of that seat because the people that you upheld this for no longer resonate. Or with this, or it's no longer for their highest good. Taurus, one of the big things about this energy for you right now is that the collective is changing and you kind of have to face the music and face the facts and just change with it. So what I've got here so far, I'm just pulling as I'm speaking to all of this, but what I have here for you so far, Taurus, is justice, but then with the Queen of Cups in reverse. Some of you feel like you're out of alignment or maybe that your intuition is off or maybe that you have like your intuition has gotten cut off or that you are out of sync with the universe, all right? Um, also, what I'm getting with this, Taurus, is that, first of all, uh, justice here does uh, uh, represent Libra, which is the ruler of the seventh house. And we're going to talk about that in a second, but the seventh house is part of what's being triggered or activated or... Uh, affected at this time, right? But then with that, you have the Queen of Cups in reverse. And so I'm feeling like justice is being served. The scales are being balanced, but you're not necessarily happy about it or you're not necessarily feeling it. For some of you, it really is that you are not truly on an energetic or empathic le level. You're not feeling it because... <clears throat> What I'm hearing is for some of you, this feels like it's out of alignment with who it is you truly are. But I don't know about that, Taurus. I feel like, okay, so it's uh, it's out of alignment with who you have been or who you are in this moment. And that's part of the reason why you're not able to connect with this or feel this or understand this at, at the moment because it's just very different. It's starkly different to what you have known things to be, okay? Um, let's see. I do want to get into the seventh house energy about this. Did I write anything down specifically about that? No. Okay, that's fine. But let's talk about this because um, this aspect is why I really truly feel like this is really affecting you on an interpersonal level. Okay, it's because of what's going on with Mars. Now, I've been talking about Mars a lot for all of us. Mars is going through a big transformation, a big shift that's going to help him to link up with Venus, the feminine, later on uh, next month and then with a final conjunction point between Venus and Pluto on the 3rd of March. And that conjunction point on the 3rd of March is happening for you in your 8th house where the conjunction between the sun and Pluto is happening for you this month. It's also where you have Venus retrograde right now this month. 
All right, so this is a huge eighth house focus for you, Taurus, and this is where we're really getting into the point of something is being uncovered and you'd really wish you would really wish that it didn't happen, okay? Now, this could be in terms of, strongly in terms of your interpersonal relationships because right now, Mars is transiting through your seventh house, which is ruled by Libra. This is your house of interpersonal relationships and all that kind of stuff, maybe even legal matters. But Mars is going through a big shift in his alignment, right? Um, so this is where this is where that, that, collective focus or that interpersonal relationship focus is for you but it's not the only place it's also happening here for you taurus in with uranus moving retrograde through aries you have aries in your 12th house again this is a house or an energy of the collective okay and uranus is going is creating or is influencing a reshaping of ourselves of our identity and taurus on top of that you, we have the North and South node influence here for you and for Libra, mainly because the North node is in Lib is in Taurus, the South node is in Libra. Okay, but with Uranus here in your twelfth house, this is the house of the collective. This is the house of spirituality. This is the house of oneness, of unity. Right. This is often where you can kind of get lost in the sauce, where you feel like you may lose your sense of self in terms of the collective, but with Uranus, the planet of liberation and freedom and great change and innovation, moving retrograde through Aries, which is the sign of our sense of self, this is triggering you on the core of you, in, at the core of your being, but in relation to how you relate to the collective, the twelfth house. On top of that, we have the North Node in Taurus, and we have the South Node in Libra. For you, Taurus, the South Node is in the sixth house, which is your house of health and wellness, um, your house of maybe even service to others, right? So the South Node relates to your past and some people say your past lives i personally like to say a parallel life because there is no i mean everything there is no real past present or future there's all everything is all happening at once you only really have the current moment right so in terms of some parallel existences that you've had taurus rising you are coming out of that with a sense of preservation and a sense of healing and and all that kind of stuff right keeping up with things to maintain the health and wellness of yourself and maybe even people around you collectively however the north node is in taurus for us right now your sign but for you specifically taurus it's in your 12th house and the north node can be seen as the direction that we're moving in in this lifetime okay the the south node is the past tech it, relatively speaking the south node is the past that's what we're coming out of and in essence that's kind of what we really need to be leaving behind what we really should be focusing on is what the north node has for us in this lifetime and it's in taurus for you so what i feel like is happening here taurus as uranus is making its retrograde transit through the 12th house for you there is a shift in your alignment in terms of what is upheld and preserved the trajectory that you are preserving or maintaining the momentum of in terms of the collective and the big thing that it feels like taurus that you are begrudgingly being influenced to move forward with is not in turn is not necessarily preserving what has always been but creating a level of security and stability and foundation within how the collective resonates right now or what the collective needs right now and i am using the word collective but that doesn't mean it has to be the greater the greater collective here whoa okay the greater collective here it could just literally be your friends and your family or your community or the people that are closest to you and i mean not necessarily the people that are um dearest to you but literally closest within your vicinity okay this is creating a big shift in your sense of self the hermit in reverse you're feeling very connected from your inner light right now this change is i'm hearing traumatic catastrophic all right 
but you're out of alignment with your inner light. And actually, Taurus, sorry for hitting the mic if that's disturbing you, but actually, Taurus, what I'm getting with this Hermit in reverse here, Hermit in reverse, Queen of Cups in reverse, but Justice is upright. Taurus, this feels like maybe whatever it is that you have been upholding for so long actually really wasn't the truth or really wasn't what you were meant to be upholding or what your inner light is guiding you towards or is needing you to uphold. I feel like you've been, I'm getting, now I'm getting Hierophant energies. And I understand Taurus that you really want to cater to people. If this is, if this is resonating with you, there is a level of wanting to cater to people. That's your, so yeah, that's kind of your South node in the sixth or the South node in your sixth house. But, but there is, it's like, it's like your, your alignment is being shifted or reworked in order for you to be in greater alignment with, or a greater in tune with, or have a greater connection with the truth of the collective or the truth of the people around you. Okay. Um, I did. Okay. We were just talking about Uranus in the 12th house. Let me write, let me read what I wrote down here. It feels like Uranus in the 12th house moving through Aries. It feels like this may be influencing you to open up to the greater reality of the collective or just the people in your immediate environment. A certain conservative or traditional mindset or belief system is being called into question. And there were a number of questions that came up for that Taurus. Those being number one, does the collective still resonate with this? Number two, is this beneficial for the collective at this time in, uh, in terms of whatever it is you would rather not change? I mean, if you want, if you're trying to keep it as it is, ask yourself, does that really resonate or is that really beneficial for the collective at this time? Okay. Uh, the next thing I have here for you is for the first time in your life, you may find friction within upholding something that used to be quite relevant. Okay, look, then here comes the three of wands that's coming out now. This is your path ahead, okay? It used to be quite relevant to, for the collective. Or what I'm getting now is some of you from a traditional mindset thought, well, no, this is, it's like you declared for whatever reason, and I'm not trying to speak ill of you in terms of this, because I do feel like there's a sen sense of benevolence behind this, but it's what you really may be up against right now, this path forward, the three of wands, you may have been the one in your fixed mindset. You may have been the one that declared, nope, this is what's good for the collective. We are upholding this. But now you may literally find yourself in a position where you are, or that mindset of yours, or that belief of yours is being called into question. And the next card that comes out here with that is temperance. And temperance is all about balance, harmony, and union. And what I'm getting from this, Taurus, is it's not just about what you believe to be right or what you believe to be fair or just or what you b deem as what's beneficial for the people around you or the collective or not. You have to take into account temperance energy, alchemy. You have to take into account the people that it is you wish to serve or the people that are around you and what their personal alignment is. Pisces energy, 12th house energy, the collective, okay? It's not all just about your mindset. You, If you're really going to be, if you're really gonna be catering to the collective, then you have to take the individuals that you are serving into account. Interesting, Taurus. Interesting, Taurus. Uh, it may no longer be for the highest good of the collective, maybe because the collective is changing or has changed. And then I wrote, or maybe they woke up. Yikes. I'm definitely, I'm seeing Hierophant energies in my head right now, okay? Now, with this, you have Jupiter in Aquarius in the 10th house, and then you also, in your 10th house, and then you also have Neptune in Pisces in the 10th house. And I point, I, I'm pointing this out, Taurus, because with Jupiter being in Aquarius, Aquarius is that sign of emotional detachment, yes, 
but emotional detachment in order to work on balancing the scales and taking everybody's uh, uh, opinions or needs or desires into account and then creating something, creating a system, creating a certain technology or revolutionizing something in terms of the greater good. And then with Neptune in Pisces, it's home sign of Pisces. This is connecting you with to deeper spirituality. This actually may, ha may be kind of forcing you or really pushing you to get in tune with the deeper emotional reality or even the deeper spiritual reality that underlies everything that that really influences all of us as a collective and i mentioned these two planets because taurus these are both in your 10th house and your 10th house is your business your career is your career really but is also how you how you are perceived of in the world your public perception and so some of you may really be experiencing friction with the certain people around you the more that you resist this change that the collective is calling for okay and they may not necessarily even be calling for this calling saying this outright to you they, they may just be saying it on an energetic level. I do feel like there are some people around you, Taurus, that actually don't even want to say this to you because they know how, they know that this type, that change in any sort of way, maybe even in specifically in this specific topic is a massive topic of contention for you. All right. But then let's go back. Let's go back to your main focus for the month, which is in fact your eighth house. So we have for you, Taurus, you have Venus moving retrograde in your eighth house. You have Plutian, Plutian, Pluto stationed here in your eighth house. This is where all of the conjunction points between Venus and Pluto are happening, including that final conjunction point between Venus, Pluto and Mars. It's also where we have the full moon and we had the new moon this month, but it is also where the sun is conjuncting with Pluto. And what I wrote down here for you, Taurus, was, um, oh, I, I'm sorry. It's also where you have Mercury going retrograde. So Mercury is here in your ninth house right now. Um, it's going to be going retrograde through from back from your ninth house back into your eighth house and what i wrote down here is in terms of this mercury retrograde something may be revealed to you during this retrograde new information Ooh, ooh, and that's related to the oh gosh you have the empress in reverse here the empress is venus it's also you taurus okay but something may be revealed here during your during this mercury retrograde new information something that you were unaware of in the past may come up but taurus herein lies the problem and this is where i really understood why the title of your reading is i'd really rather we didn't but and then you proceed this is the topic of contention but herein lies the problem because you would have preferred for whatever is being revealed to you or whatever is coming up as being shown whatever is being dug up underneath the surface you would have rather that it stayed buried okay and then the question that came up for you here or came up from you in terms of this is why rock the boat I'm gonna be straight up and honest with you, Taurus. That question of why rock the boat is unfortunately Empress in reverse energy because it's enabling individuals to just stay the same, to stay the same, to keep the status quo. And Taurus, I understand you're just trying to keep the momentum. This is just your fixed energy at play, but, but, the only thing, the one and only thing in life, Taurus, that we can count on is change. Change is inevitable. So instead of going against the grain and trying to preserve something, an outdated point of view, instead, what's better is to do your best to try and work with this change and then take that fixed momentum or that fixed energy of yours and put it towards keeping the trajectory towards what the, the new is that's coming forward for us all right um 
With that said, actually, I do want to talk more about this Empress in Reverse energy. But with that said, um, I didn't write this down for you, but I did realize it. I picked up on it while I was channeling for Libra. So I'm going to say it to you as well. Saturn is a big part of what's happening here. But what I got, and as you can see, Saturn for you, Taurus, is in your ninth house, which is a house of expansion, higher awareness, higher learning, spirituality, um, coming out of your comfort zone, big time travel, traveling to new and foreign places. This is definitely you traveling to new and foreign places right now. But the influence of Saturn here, Taurus, is the revolutionary side of Saturn. Because Saturn, yes, rules Capricorn, which Capricorn is another Earth sign, but it's the cardinal sign, okay? But it, it Capricorn keeps with the system, right? Aquarius bucks the system. And Saturn also traditionally ruled Aquarius as well as Saturn. But now in today's age, Uranus is also associated with Saturn. And Uranus is that big revolutionary energy, right? Which is happening in your 12th house right here. Okay. But Saturn, I feel like the influence of Saturn at this point is the revolutionary side. And I know what I wrote down for Libra is things are just going to change. I mean, you have to, yes, yes, there are certain things that you're just, there are status quos or there are certain structures that you're just going to have to deal with. It is what it is. But when we get into the revolutionary side of Saturn, this is Saturn saying to us, you have got to change with the times. It is what it is. You can't avoid it. You can't get around it. Things change. Okay. And so I feel like that's a big influence here. All right. Especially with Jupiter being in Uranus, being in a uh, Jupiter, being an expansive energy, right? Okay. But let's talk more about this Empress in reverse energy here, because I believe, oh, I did write it down for you. Actually, I wrote it down for you, Taurus. Saturn is in your ninth. You just have to change with the times. It is what it is. Okay, great. So let's talk about this Empress in reverse energy here because this is, I, I literally, what I just heard, Taurus, is this is you being out of alignment with your Taurus energy or feeling out of alignment with your Taurus energy. There is definitely a level of energetic enablement here. But it also, but see, Taurus, that feels like it's mostly from you. <laughs> Because I feel like the people around you or the people that you serve or your family, the people that are closest to you, however this is resonating for you, I feel like the people around you want a change or want to change. The next card that's come out here is the Two of Pentacles. The Two of Pentacles is upright. This is in connection with the Empress in reverse. And what I'm getting from the Two of Pentacles, Taurus, is that you have to take a balanced approach to this. Two of Pentacles, and now with that is the Two of Cups. Taurus, you can't be so rigid here. The Empress, or I'm sorry, not the Empress, the, the, the Queen of Wands is at the bottom of the deck. You can't be so rigid here. I understand that you're trying to keep the balance. You're trying to keep the physical balance. Okay. But you also have to, you can't just focus on the physical. You have to focus on the emotional side of things as well. All right, which I understand tends to be a little bit difficult for earth signs, mainly for Taurus. Um, but if you're going to serve people, if you're going to be this loving, compassionate empress that allows individuals to grow within your garden by giving them what they need, not what it is you think they should need, which is the emperor in, I'm sorry, the empress, actually emperor energy as well but that's the Empress in reverse, providing to them, nurturing them, but only from the place that you deem necessary. That's not appropriate. I mean, you might get things to grow that way, sure, but are they gonna grow to their fullest and maximum potential? No. Why? Because you are not honoring the organism that it is you are nurturing. Sure, you're nurturing them, but not from the point of view of the realm of their selves, right? So that's where in terms of preserving or keeping the balance here, you also have to take in the emotional constitution of the individuals that you are surrounded by. 
all right queen of wands is at the bottom of the deck eight of pentacles is underneath that see okay so what you're up against taurus is yes wanting being in alignment sure and working towards something sure but two of swords blind to what is is actually really needed or refusing to see what is actually truly needed that needs to come to an end the world and you need to start a new chapter page of pentacles okay let's see what else can we say to taurus in terms of this energy I'd really rather not but hmm Eight of Cups has come out in reverse. Why are you resistant to leaving these things behind? Why is this Eight of Cups here in reverse for Taurus? Really rather not, but... Plain and simple, Taurus. The Eight of Cups is in reverse because of the devil. And I'm hearing attachment things to attachment to things that are no longer serving you. Also, could it could also be a level of codependency, Taurus. It uh, and that needs to come to an end. Ten of Swords. See, and then look, we're right back to the Three of Wands to Temperance, baby. All right, your path ahead. The move. The, the path is changing. The circumstances are changing. The path ahead, in order for you and the people that you serve, your family, if you're going to serve whomever it is you're serving from an unconditionally loving point of view, if you are to continue at all, Taurus, and yes, I said that correctly, if you are to continue down this path at all, something's got to change. You have got to bring something to an end. You have got, I'm also kind of getting a, a level of tyranny. I just heard you've got to bring this tyrannical mindset to a close because it's not really serving you or anyone else. It's actually kind of hurting, 10 of swords. It's been causing a lot of friction. It's been causing a lot of damage. It's been causing, becoming a, it's been causing a lot of emotional upheaval and not necessarily in a good way, all right? It's causing more damage to others than it is creating life-fulfilling and life-sustaining circumstances. The devil with the Eight of Cups in reverse. That's why you're having trouble walking away from this. Anything else? I want to... What, what, what can, else can we say to Taurus about this devil energy here? What can we say? What message do we have for Taurus in terms of the devil? The star. Healing and wish fulfillment. And the nine of swords to the queen of pentacles okay all right so some of you are legit concerned about what this change change means for people i'm getting a very strong motherly energy with this queen of pentacles but it also kind of feels like helicopter parent type level whether you're a parent or not, okay? This is really in terms of the people that you serve. But you see, the devil here is clarified by the Nine of Swords and the Star. You're afraid of the future. You're afraid of the unknown. Um, and that really, and that really truly does make sense, Taurus. It really does make sense for you. Because you're 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 moving into unfamiliar territory. And you are used to being that stable rock you know it's so very similar to what libra is going through um and so if this is resonating with you and if you're curious i in, i invite you to watch the libra reading also because you know venus is retrograde this is affecting you guys really really bad really really strongly i don't want to say really bad really strong right now um maybe the strongest of all because venus is your ruling planet but yeah libra is going through something similar it's like you the place from which you were that rock or stability or foundation for people is no longer relevant or is changing and so yes yes you're kind of from this queen of pentacles nurturance how to provider point of view how do i be a provider you're afraid of the unknown and that's what the star represents the star represents wish fulfillment and healing right but it doesn't give you the details or the specifics of how that's going to work out or how maybe even how long that's going to take or where it's going to lead you. Makes perfect sense, Taurus. All right. 
So, closing guidance here for Taurus from the Tarot. <laughs> Back to the Three of Wands. Focus on the path ahead. Anything else? Three of Wands. Anything else? Three of Wands. Yeah, that Three of Wands is the big focus right now. We're moving forward. And yes, Taurus, you can absolutely be that rock, that stability, all right? Closing message for you, Taurus, from the Tarot is the Three of Wands to the Page of Pentacles. It's really time to start a new chapter, okay? It's really time to start a new chapter. All right, cool. So with all of that said, let me, um, let me close this out for my Taurus rising here. We're gonna get some closing messages from the Oracle of the Seven Energies. Three shuffles, one. Two. And three. All right, Taurus. Let's see what your closing message messages are. Oh my god. It's so funny because Spirit said what they are, and I was like, really? Multiple? And they were like, oh yes, Eric. And then a whole stack comes out. All right. So the very first card at the top of this stack here is card number 21, Taurus, exposed and revealed. Again, you would really have rathered something that has been exposed here to stay buried. But the universe says, sorry, Taurus, no dice. Can't have that. Next, you have the royal you which in, in this deck I see as your higher self. Your higher self is really coming forward, influencing some sort of change. And this is speaking directly to some of you that have serious ties to the collective. And your higher self is saying, Taurus, if you're gonna be, if you are gonna be serving the collective, then you have got to get on board with whatever is being exposed here. The next card is feeling the world. And this is that Piscean 12th house energy, all right? Some of you may even be expo are being exposed to a greater form of the collective. Maybe what, maybe what actually could be happening for some of you, Torrens, is your immediate environment is not just what you serve any longer. Now you're being given a greater responsibility, but with that greater responsibility comes, or I'm sorry, with that, yeah, with that responsibility comes great power, yes, but it also requires you to take more into account than just what you are immediately used to, okay? Next card you have here, though, <laughs> Taurus is card number six. It is what it is, babe. <laughs> it is what it is. There really is no point in arguing with the universe about this. It is what it is. You're just gonna have to make the changes that are necessary in order for you to be completely of service at this time, all right? Or at a greater form of service. And then finally you, not finally, but then you have uh, the next card here is shining through. And then a deep breath. The truth is shining through. Something is being revealed here. There is something new that's coming to the surface, Taurus, but it's not new. It's been there all along. It's just been hidden. Now it's being unsurfaced and it's shining through. But as it, but also Taurus, this actually also speaks to that hermit energy in reverse that I was, that came out. Uh, you're directly objecting some new truth that is shining through here. And in terms of that, you just gotta take a deep breath, okay? All right, Taurus, I'm going to end this part of the reading. I'm going to pause for a second, regroup, and then we will get into the general collective energies. Yeah, stay tuned. All right, guys. Oh, sorry. I forgot to do something. Oh, well, it's fine. Hi, guys. So welcome to the general, big old general part of this reading. Yes, so this is the second half. Sorry, I want to write down this timestamp before I forget. Okay. So now we're going to get into the second half of our reading here. And this is, again, non-denominational. All right. So this is for what... This is just a reading for the collective energies of Taurus for the month of January. And I want to make a little bit of a, 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 a an interesting point. Um, 
I know I'm st- I'm I'm practicing sidereal astrology, right? I find that I resonate more with it. I want to align with that because uh, technically speaking, that's where the planets actually are versus where mainstream or tropical astrology says that they are. But I, I don't care what you guys align with. That's it's not for me to tell you. I'm just I just want to bring. It's not for me to tell you what to accept. I just want to bring the information to you. And in mainstream astrology, I'm a Taurus sun, but in tropical, I'm sorry, in sidereal astrology, I'm an Aries sun. But Taurus, sometimes my 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 tropical and mainstream placements still resonate with me. And interestingly enough, when I look at my progressed chart versus my natal chart, right? So you do have you have your natal chart, you have what's transiting your natal chart, and then you also have your progressed chart because we are, we don't live in a static universe. Yes, your natal chart is a snapshot of the moment that you were born and that kind of um that's like the blueprint of your life, right? But then as you age or as you go through your life, your planets progress. And in terms of my progressed chart, my sun is in Taurus right now. And what I'm talking about here, what I've been talking about here for Taurus, if you didn't watch the Taurus rising uh, part of this reading, what I've been talking about is revolutionizing or changing something and being of service, like needing to change something that you have been upholding. And so thus, the general energy for Taurus this month is I'd really rather we didn't, but for me personally, that is resonating because I'm bring I'm really doubling down on bringing this sidereal focus to the collective and the fixed Taurus side of me, even the fixed Leo side of me is like, are we sure about this? People aren't really vibing with it that much. Like, I mean, like, are you sure universe? I'd really rather we didn't go this way, but if you're saying that, there it is right there. I just, I, I wanted to bring that to you because I thought it was interesting. If you're interested in your progressed chart and your sidereal chart, I am capable of bringing that to you, both from your tropical side and from your sidereal side. Like the program that I have takes, has, I can use any system, okay? So if you're interested in any of it, just hit me up free of charge if you would like to just get your chart. If you want an interpretation, that's going to cost. But anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to bring that. I just, I felt compelled to say that. All right, Taurus. So let's get into these general energies for you for the month. This is for uh, Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or any other placement that you have, okay? Non-denominational, regardless as to whatever system of astrology you practice, this is for you, okay? I just want to get a general card pull energy reading for the collective of Taurus energies for the month of January 2022. We're going to give this three more shuffles here. This is one... And like I said, the general feeling or the general theme for you this month, Taurus, is I'd really rather we didn't, but begrudgingly, here we go. Yeah, this is four. And this is five. All right, Taurus. So, oh, also, we could be talking to a cross watcher here in this section. Yeah. All right, kids, let's see. What messages do we have for Taurus for January 2020? All right, well, this makes sense. This card has been coming up a lot. Um, and this card is speaking to Venus in retrograde here. But we have woman holding a coin. This would represent Venus. And then we have the thinking woman here. The, so what I'm getting from, okay, obviously woman holding a coin, Venus. Venus is in retrograde, probably hitting you pretty hard right now, Taurus. Venus is your ruling planet. What I'm getting with the thinking woman is you don't have to be a woman to resonate with this. This is talking about feminine energy. It's talking about the nurturance of that feminine side. And there is definitely a reshaping or a reworking of how you are nurturing others. And this is directly related to Venus being retrograde. In terms of sidereal astrology, Venus is retrograde through Sagittarius. In terms of tropical astrology, I believe Venus is retrograde through Capricorn. Either way, the topic of contention here lies within how you are, how you are of service or how you are nurturing others, maybe even yourself. 
And then at the bottom of the deck is cornucopia. And to me, that is saying that it's it's reminding you and or it's reiterating the fact that there are infinite there are an infinite amount of ways to nurture. It doesn't have to be strictly one thing. And that's what I feel like, Taurus, you're having the most trouble coming to terms with at this time because your values are changing. Maybe even the values of the people around you are changing, but that was the big, that was the big thing especially for Taurus rising. It felt like the collective around you it has changed or is changing or is needing something different in order to be nurtured. Case in point, I'm growing a lot of, um, I, I'm growing a, 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 an herb garden, herbs and vegetables, some flowers too for pollination, but mainly I'm focusing on herbs and vegetables. And I found that in the seedling stage, like it, when I when I plant the seed and then they start to pop, the seedlings don't necessarily need a lot of water, but they crave sunlight, right? And you notice that you notice when they've reached a certain level of maturity because that shifts. They tend to need more water and maybe sometimes less sunlight. So certain certain plants that I have here that were really thriving in full sun, once they reached a level of maturity, I had to I learned that I had to move them to a more shaded area because regardless as to however much water I would give them when they would start to wilt, they would still not stand perfectly up because the sunlight was too much. They needed a bit of shade. And so that's kind of what we're talking about here. Catering your level of nurturance or providing or catering to keeping a certain momentum or certain trajectory is going to have to shift when the organisms or when the individuals that you are serving or that you are nurturing, when they shift. And Taurus, the only thing, the one thing in this universe that you absolutely can count on, that you absolutely can be sure will in fact happen is change, okay? What else do we have for Taurus here for the month of January? Envy. What? Oof. All right. At the bottom of the deck here, you do have indecision now. This is definitely you at a crossroads saying, what do I do here? Do I go in this new direction or do I stay the same? There is definitely a level of envy coming through here, Taurus. You have envy. Then you have journey with community. So some of you feel like you're on the outside looking in. Some of you feel like you've never really truly been able to fully connect with the collective, even though these are people or situations in which you serve. It feels like you're an outsider or it feels like you feel like you're an outsider. And then, and because of this, there is envy coming from you. Because it's like, why can't I just be the same as everyone else? Or why can't everyone else still align with the same thing that I'm wanting to align with? Why does it have to be this big gap that we have to find, build a bridge between? I want to get into the tarot because I really wanna clarify what this means here. So we're gonna clarify journey, we're gonna clarify journey, community, and envy. Oh, conversely, the envy could be coming from the community. Who does this person think they are? Well, why are they so connected and we're not? Well, that's because you're meant to be a leader here, Taurus in some way. Five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four. Whoa, something's coming out here. The five of wands. And five. Look, Taurus, just because 
just because you're a leader in some way, just because you're a leader in some way, it doesn't mean that you are the full authority. You are the end all be all. Yes, you're in a position to keep a certain trajectory intact, but you still also kind of have to listen to the community or the collective, I guess. But maybe that's why people are envious of you. I'm hearing, why won't you listen to us? And for some of you, that's because I just heard, well, that's because the universe is calling for something different. Five of Wands type of energy. The universe is calling for something different. Judgment is at the bottom of the deck. What else, what else can you say to, to Taurus about this piece here? Six of Wands. Page of Pentacles. Eight of Wands. The Tower. Overall energy for you, Taurus, is the Hanged Man change in perspective. I'm hearing needing to do something differently. You have a number of cards here. First card out, first three cards out were the six of wands, the page of pentacles, and the eight of wands. And what I'm getting from that is there is going to be victory in starting a new chapter. And I, have, and I also feel like it's going to clear up a lot of the stuck or stagnancy. It's going to clear up a lot of the roadblocks. This is, this is a revolutionary energy. Um, and and Taurus and what I'm feeling what the what, what spirit is saying what the universe is saying is this is needed this is needed because it's going to clear up a lot of the blockages the roadblocks the in the discrepancies that you've experienced but in order for that to happen something's got to come down the tower something there has got to be a drastic change then you have the ten of cups with the two of cups But I'm actually getting romantic vibes from that. So what I'm going to do is going to move to the Romance Angels. So what's this Ten of Cups, Two of Cups for Taurus, please, Spirit? Ten of Cups, Two of Cups for Taurus. One last shuffle. What's this Ten of Cups, Two of Cups for Taurus, please, Spirit? Ten of Cups, Two of Cups. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. All right. It isn't necessarily romantic, but it does, but it is the Ten of Cups and the Two of Cups is talking about um, the emotional aspect, the emotional side of things, right? And I did talk about that in Taurus, Taurus Rising, the Taurus Rising section of this video. Interpersonal relationships are key here. If you're really going to serve people, if you're really going to be loving and nurturing, oh, I said it here too. If you're really going to be loving and nurturing, if you're really going to allow things to grow, then you have to let things grow with what it is they need, not what you deem is necessary for them. So to clarify, the Ten of, the, ten of Cups and the Two of Cups is heart-to-heart -heart conversations and let your friends help you. So this is about communicating with individuals and seeing what it is that they need, connecting with them on a heart level, on an emotional level, which I understand could be difficult for you, Taurus, but have those conversations. Let your friends help you. If you find that the collective or that the people that you serve or that you nurture, your friends, your family, the people closest to you, your community, if you find that they are changing, then you have to change with them. It doesn't mean that you have to completely change who you are. But it also means that you've got to listen to them. Find a way to relate to them on this new level or from this new emotional place. Okay, I'm gonna close this out now. I wanna get closing oracle guidance from you, Taurus, for you, Taurus, from the magic of unicorns. Yeah, three shuffles, one. Two, 
M3. You know, I'm sitting here channeling this reading, channeling this message, and then thinking about how that relates to me in how I am, I guess you could say really pushing sidereal astrology. And I'm wondering if, well, I'm saying in the back of my head, I'm like, well, to well spirit, does that mean that I'm not necessarily looking, listening to the connect collective and what they want? And what spirit is saying to me is, no, the universe is calling for something new. It's very confusing. Take the message as it resonates. <laughs> okay. It, it, but I really want to talk through this. Um, I mean, I'm still relating to you through astrology, right? Which is interesting. Um, but I'm just reworking it. And I'm not even saying that you absolutely have to follow this form of astrology. I'm just kind of putting it out there for you. Universe is calling for something different. Okay. And Spirit says, literally, Eric, that's all it needs to be. There is nothing else to it. Okay. Closing message for you, Taurus, for January 2022. That's it right there. Wow. Wow. And then spirit goes ahead and answers my own question right here. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck, you have card number 12, which boils down to a three. Uh, the number three, 333, three, three, the Ascended Masters may have really been repeating for you lately. The freedom of truth. Something's being uncovered that you'd probably really rather it didn't. <laughs> Communicate honestly. Be who you truly are. Ooh. And then you have card number nine, open your heart, love yourself and dare to be vulnerable. Okay. This definitely puts you in a vulnerable place, especially if you're coming to the collective and saying, all right, what it is, that, what is it that you want or need? That's you being vulnerable Taurus, because now instead of just saying, this is what's going to happen, you're kind of like, okay, how do we do this? Interesting. Finally, though, you have card number four, which I'm sorry, 14, which boils down to a five stand in your power. Be passionate about your vision. Bring about positive change. Taurus, you do in fact have the power to, 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 to bring change, but you will bring change by aligning with the new trajectory, aligning with the new momentum and working to preserve that new momentum. So yes, Taurus, you absolutely can be an agent of change here. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. If you would like a personal reading with me, whether it's from whether it's uh, astrology or just tarot or both, hit me up. My information, my email can be found in the description box below. Just send me an email, I'll get you all set up. If you would like extra content with me throughout the month, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can be found in the description box as well. And as always, smash that like button for me. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Share this with your friends and if you're new here please consider subscribing yeah i love you all so very much i hope you have a fantastic month and i look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of february yes excellent take care bye <laughs>